Exactly. Yeah. So, I'm going to ask you just, I mean, a question probably a lot of people. Everybody has asked the same question. Have they? How did this come into your experience? It's a long story, I'll not make it long. Yeah. It's yeah. that as an engineer, I was married to a woman who was very esoteric. I knew that um, when I married her. And what happened gradually is that she ended up taking me to a, a channel, to a psychic. Um, and I said no, I did not want to go, but I did for her. And they gave me some information which I didn't believe and didn't even keep track of, except there was one phrase that kept coming up, an identical phrase, and the phrase was, there is a magnetic master named Cryon trying to get hold of you. We had a man who was uh, in his 60s and a man who was in his 20s, three years apart, didn't even know each other, gave me the same phrase. Now, that engineering brain in me says, this is impossible, so I looked up the term cryon, it didn't exist. Um, I wanted to find out how they could know this and what I wasn't being fooled or tricked or whatever. And so finally, I had to acknowledge that there was something going on that was beyond my perception and beyond 3D. And so I said, okay, whoever you are, I'm gonna sit in the chair, I'll give you five minutes, <laughs> come in or not. And that's when it happened. And, that, and it came in, it came in the way of emotion. Total, raw emotion, I cried. No messages, no profundities, nothing, just um, motion. But it was, uh, it was cause and effect. Every time I would sit down and give intent, I would receive this, I would get flushes, all these things. That started me to thinking, maybe there's more. There's something going on yes. there. What was the feeling you felt? You describe it as emotion? Yeah, I would say, love, I, as a guy, as an engineer who cries yeah. on his own terms, I yeah. would say it was uncomfortable. Right, okay. It was uncomfortable okay. emotion. And, but it wasn't sad, it was a release uh, kind of emotion you get when, you, when you're in a movie and something happens and you're, oh, you know. And this then became uh, something I actually craved and wanted. <laughs> Let's talk about channeling because as yes. you say yourself, when you mentioned the drag-alongs, people yep. come along to something like this and they, 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 the real skeptics don't know what's going on. For you, you kept going with that. What's it like for a channel? Is it uncomfortable in the body? Does it take a while for you to kind of blend with... with um, We're all different. Yeah. In the States, and this, I've done this three times in Europe and once in the States, where I put multiple channels on stage together. And this is to show people we don't compete, mm -hmm. we all have different kinds of messages, and there is a similarity, a confluence of message. Mm -hmm. And every single one of them will answer that differently. I think it's just, it's just about our own personal uh, way of doing it. Mm -hmm. I have friends who can stand and channel with their eyes open and walk around, and they don't remember any of it. Right. I sit and remember all of it. Okay. <laughs> York, it's kind of you yeah. blended with Cryon more so. Like, let's talk about someone like Esther Hicks, who everybody knows. Of course. Have you met Esther Hicks? I have not. I've, I've always wanted to, and we're both Hay House, and it mm -hmm. just never has, never has come. But we love her. Okay. You have full respect for all the other channels. Oh, you totally. Yeah. yeah. Barbara Marsniak, all these kinds of people. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. And let's, I mean, who is Cryon? What's your understanding it's of Cryon? A, if you could define it in our terms of what we might want, yeah. I, am, I am channeling what can only be an angelic being. Okay. But I don't want to say being, because Cryon says it's not a being, it's not singular. He says everything that humans do is, is in a box and is singular. Uh, you're one person, one mind, one brain, one face, and that's who you are until you die. And, um, and we tend to then paste that upon God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and angels are one name, put skin and wings on them, they come, they go. And Christ says it's not that way at all. In the multidimensional world, it is completely nonlinear. And so it's almost like a group that I feel. A group consciousness. It is. Yeah. Um, okay. And it changes. And you wow. feel it's angelic, though, oh, in its nature. This is what I feel that I can say. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how, when people want to, I mean, obviously we like to label here on Earth, so. Uh, <laughs> You're with me. <laughs> yeah. Extraterrestrial, yeah. angelic, is there a difference? Are yes. We, I so, think extraterrestrial, by its very ET name, okay. means um, beings from another planet. Okay. I think that celestial is more like what I feel. And that okay. is. If whatever you define as God, this, the central source of love, is what I'm channeling. And that comes from, it doesn't come from another planet. Mm. How has it benefited your life? How has it benefited my yeah. life? I am yeah. living longer today because of it. That, for, number one, first of all, I don't You're age. I, I don't age in a chair. Um, I, have, I have more energy now than I've ever had before. I'm 73. 
Um, I'm, I'm just loving it. I'm, I'm wanting more. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, is, this is how it's benefited me. It's opened my eyes. All I want to do is more of it. Uh, not ready to stop at all. <laughs> So physically, you feel you've benefited a lot. Obviously, oh, yeah. obviously, holistically, do you feel you've benefited knowledge-wise? What are you like? Is has there know, ever moments where you sit in the chair yeah. and you hear Cryon say something and you go, "Wow"? Uh, I'm yeah, sure there is. What, can, I, can, can you give us some of your wow well moments? I don't repeat them. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. If there's too many wow things, that that means it's going to come later in a more palatable form mm -hmm. <laughs> that mm -hmm. for for everybody to hear. Um, and that has happened several times in, in certain things that Brian has, has done and some of the predictions he's given and, and other things. Most of all, I think if you had to boil down, um, you know, who is it, and if you've asked that, it's, it's uh, an angelic celestial being that gives powerful, comfortable, benevolent, loving messages about the times that are changing. That's what it is. And let's try and sum those up. Let, let's, like, what are the three most powerful things? from Cryon's teachings that you think people should hear? Number one, we're born magnificent or not born dirty, over and over. He says, if you knew how this worked, you are a piece of God. Humans have a soul, and that soul belongs to God. That soul is something we come in with, and it's not tarnished when it arrives. And yet we are taught that it is, and we have to climb to a certain place to get to God. So the biggest thing that Cryon teaches is that we are all here, not by accident and that we are all magnificent. Now we, we have to then take our magnificence and cognize it. Do we believe it? Um, that's, that's a tough one because we, you know, we're taught we're less than, there's a lot, a lot of problems with self-worth and all that. So truly the, the, the teaching mode is to try to get us to cognize and recognize that we can do things that we didn't think we could do. Can we live longer? Can we talk to our own selves? I mean, there's such, there's such proof. Uh, Bruce Lipton is one mm -hmm. in epigenetics who talks about the influence of consciousness on cellular structure. And as a medical doctor, he's shown it in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. Years of research show this to be true. This is what crime is teaching as well. We can actually control disease. All disease is here. All, it's what it's at the imbalance or balance that we have. This is what Joe Dispenza teaches. Uh, in such a profound way. So crying is the, I would say, the, uh, the channeling part of that, not the science part of that. But we're, this is why we can present together so, so uh, flawlessly uh, in a confluence that, that doesn't compete. We're all talking about the same thing. Greg Braden, the scientist, is the same. This is the great thing. Some people feel like they say to me, they're all saying the same thing. And I say, but isn't that good? What do you want to say? <laughs> yeah, you like differences. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful blend. We're going through a shift, there's no doubt about it. Yes, we're we all are. starting to feel it. People yeah. are feeling it physically now. You talked about today, weather changes, yeah. governmental changes, everything. People say that we're going from 3D to 5D. Do you want to know the, the truth of this? <laughs> What's happening there? Like, cause okay, here's the, here, I'm, I'm an engineer, remember? Yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as 5D. Okay. okay. Um, past 3D, there is no linearity, we are told. So past three, actually 4D is, 4D uh, dimension is time. So past four, we would say, you can't count them because when you get rid of linearity, you cannot say five, six, seven, because that's linear. So it goes one, two, three, four, all. Now, are there layers of all? Yes. Okay. So that is the explanation of 11 dimensions or five dimensions. It's just, it's part of the soup that's different than 3D. And yes, we are going through this because we're starting to see things we didn't have before. Uh, you can look at, at the consciousness of humanity over the last 50 years and see dramatic changes. Um, Greg Brayton is famous for this when he teaches his fractal time. He says, we are overdue for war. He says, we didn't get it when it was supposed to be there. And uh, we're actually reacting to that bump in the road. Mm. Um, in his teaching, he shows where fractal time, time is really in a circle. If you saw the movie Arrival, yeah. It's one of the first uh, um, science fiction movies we've seen that made sense, and it's, it actually is friendly. You know, mm -hmm. they need us, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. it, it has to do with time in a circle. That's what we're, what Greg is teaching, that's what Crying has taught. Overdue for a war, we are, we're having a consciousness where we're starting to see um, more and more people want the same kind of things. There's gyrations in that, um, and things you don't expect. Uh, I could give you what's happening in, with Britain, it's happening in Ireland, it's going to affect Ireland, what's happening in the United States with Trump, sure, sure. all of these. They're all wild cards, and it's just uh, so different than anybody expected. Do you feel we are heading to a war, in a sense? No. Or we think we can bypass it? Yes, and okay. I believe that you may have small ones. Okay. okay. You may have things that are, well, we just experienced with small war. 
Uh, you have the ones in Syria right now. You have 